Daniel chapter 8. We've been in a series in the book of Daniel. Last Wednesday night I covered this chapter, the whole chapter 8. And it's on the website if you missed it. And the, the audio version is there if you go to the church website. You can find it there. And there are some lesson outlines uh, on the table. If you'd like to pick one up and listen to that lesson and take notes, uh, you can do that. I want to look at the last part of this chapter this morning. To say the least, the Bible is a complex book, especially when it comes to prophecy. Every Bible teacher has his own opinion about uh, how things are going to work out. This does kind of confuse church members to hear different preachers say different things. But I have the truth, and you come to the right place this morning. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping to get an amen. But uh, I'd like to shed a little light on what is happening and what is about to happen. This sermon is going to focus on the life and work of the Antichrist. Now, we need to prepare for the coming of Jesus. I think the time is short, and we need to know the truth about eschatology. That is, the doctrine of the end times. And uh, the Bible has revealed a lot to us about what is going to happen, and in the book of Daniel especially. Daniel is the revelation of the Old Testament. Uh, we look at Revelation for a lot of prophecy concerning the end time, but there's a lot of it right here in the book of Daniel and also in the book of Ezekiel. It's been estimated some 40 billion people have lived on planet Earth since Adam. I have no idea how they came up with that, but that's an estimate. Some 40 billion people have lived on Earth. And the world has witnessed many talented, intelligent, powerful people that have arisen and lived on this earth. Matter of fact, in Daniel, we looked at four empires and four mighty men, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Cyrus the Great, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar. These were all great men and uh, created great empires while they were here. But there's one coming that none of these has ever been able to match. The Antichrist who is coming. He will be powerful. He will be intelligent. He'll be ruthless. He'll be very, very efficient. Very deceitful. He's really going to represent the pinnacle. Of all that man can achieve without God. Look at all these others. He's going to be Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, Alexander, Julius Caesar, all rolled into one. He's going to have all their strengths at his disposal. He will be Satan's superman. We're going to talk about the truth about Satan's Superman. Daniel chapter 8, let's begin with verse 23 and read to the end of the chapter. Let me back up by way of review. Chapter 8 is basically about a man named Antiochus Epiphanes. We covered all this Wednesday night. Antiochus, uh, when Alexander the Great died... His empire was divided among four generals. And uh, under Seleucus, years later, Antiochus became the king of that empire. And uh, he's a type of the Antichrist. He's brought out by Daniel because a lot of the things that Antiochus did foreshadows what the Antichrist is going to do when he comes. So we talked about all that. Again, if you, if you missed that lesson, I encourage you to go and listen to it online as we covered chapter 8. But we get to the end of this, 
And this is definitely referring to Satan's superman. It's talking about the Antichrist himself. Look at verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. It will be by the power of Satan. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Reference to the Jews. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. The reference to the Lord Jesus. And he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut up the vision. For it shall be for many days. And I Daniel fainted. And it was six certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision. And none understood it. Now later on Gabriel's going to come to him and explain some more of this uh, in the next chapter. But if you want to take notes, first of all, let's think about the appearance. The appearance of Satan's superman. The text tells us, that in the end times a fierce king will stand up. We think, we think we're at that time. We look at what the Bible says about the signs of the end times. And I think we can know that this man is coming soon. He's about to appear. I don't think anybody can tell you exactly who the Antichrist is right now. Or exactly when he's going to appear. But the Bible does show us certain things that accompany his appearance. We look at the signs around us today. We realize, if, if you know your Bible, you've got to realize these are the last days. The stage has been set for the Antichrist to appear. Think about the condition of the world today. The Bible tells us that in the end times, before the Antichrist comes, the world's going to be in bad shape. It's going to be in a terrible moral condition. Jesus said himself in Luke 17, verses 26 and 27, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man at his coming. Now, the days of Noah were pretty bad, wasn't it? That's where God said he looked down and found evil everywhere. Every thought of every imagination was evil. As it was then, so shall it be in the last days. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day Noah entered to the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So I think we can look around and see that we are in those days. Go to 2 Timothy. And look at chapter 3. And let's note the first five verses. Here Paul is telling us the way it's going to be in the world before the Antichrist comes. He says, verse 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we in perilous times? Amen. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. He said from such turn away. I think that's an apt description of the days in which we're living. It's easy to, to see that our world bears the marks 
of the fulfillment of these end times. I believe that Satan Superman is about to appear. I said last Sunday, I believe he's alive somewhere today. He has not yet been revealed. But I believe the Antichrist, the false prophet, are alive and well, and someday soon they shall be revealed. Think secondly about the corruption of religion today. Another note is that Another sign is that in the end times will be a time of great apostasy. There will be a great falling away. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. Paul said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and be turned unto fables. False teachers today are turning many away from the truth. We are living in a time of a great apostasy. Many have departed from the doctrines of the Bible. There was a time when if somebody called himself a Christian, he pretty much understood that they believed certain things. That a Christian would believe in the virgin birth of Christ. That a Christian would believe in the atonement at the cross, the resurrection. They would believe the inspired errancy of the Bible. It's not true today. I mean, there are many people who call themselves Christians that deny all those things. Folks, listen, just because a group calls themselves a church does not make them a church. I'm talking about a New Testament church that God recognizes. There's many that call themselves churches today that are not true churches of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have departed from the faith. They deny the fundamental truths of the scriptures. Now I, that upsets some people when you say that. That there are false churches. What the Bible says there would be. The parable of the wheat and tares. Remember that parable? Jesus sold the wheat when he was here. And the enemy came along and sold tares among the wheat. Jesus left a church here. He left a New Testament church. And the devil came along and he sold his tares among the wheat. He sowed false churches among the true churches. Why? To deceive. They will teach their false doctrines. And they will deceive many. So we've got to be careful today. That we are not yoking up with a counterfeit church. The, the devil, as I said, he's a master counterfeiter. He's counterfeited the churches of Christ. He's counterfeited the gospel. He's counterfeited preachers. He's, count, he's going to counterfeit the Trinity. Amen? We believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What's coming? The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. There's an unholy Trinity coming. Satan, the Antichrist, and his false prophet. An unholy Trinity. So the devil loves to counterfeit the things of God. And a Christian who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, who has accepted the Bible, they can be able to discern these things and know what is true from what is false. Cults are growing by leaps and bounds today. It's, it's amazing what some people will believe. Because, folks, if you reject the truth, you've got to believe a lie. Because that's all that's left. Right? If you reject the truth, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the only thing left to believe is a lie. And many have fallen for some of the most outrageous false doctrine you can imagine. When, when denominations have to take a vote, whether or not to allow homosexuals to be ordained, something's wrong. Something's wrong. 
Folks, there are some things that are nailed down so firmly in the Bible, there's no question about them. But we're seeing every fundamental doctrine today under attack. Many have turned from the truth. So what hinders the Antichrist from coming? Well, there's one event, I think, that hinders his coming, and that's the rapture. Before he can come, Christ is going to remove his churches. His true churches are going to be removed before the Antichrist can come and do his thing. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. If you want to read about uh, the end times and how to know that we're in the end times, read the two epistles to Thessalonians because Paul mentions there a lot about the second coming of Christ. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Look at verse 6. But well, back in verse 3, he said, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the man of sin is the Antichrist. He is the son of perdition. He will exalt himself above all that's called God and seek to be worshipped. Look at verse 6. And now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, that word means hinder. He who now hinders will hinder until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, a reference to the Antichrist, then shall he be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even so, whose coming, talking about the Antichrist, is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe the lie. Now he says there, there's something right now that's hindering the Antichrist from coming and doing his thing. What is hindering is the fact that the Holy Spirit and the Spirit-filled Church of God is here and we are hindering the work of the devil. We're hindering the coming of the Antichrist. We've got to be removed. Before he comes. In the rapture, the Holy Spirit will leave his work of restraining evil. The church that is indwelt by the Holy Spirit will leave. And then the Antichrist will be allowed to have his heyday. Nothing will hinder him anymore. God's going to allow him seven years. To deceive this world. And many shall be deceived. Because they've rejected the truth. God gives them a strong delusion. To believe the lies. Of the Antichrist. So there's two hindrances right now. The church and the Holy Ghost. Now some I know. They're. They want to argue with me about this and say, well, Brother Wes, why should we be removed and not suffer tribulation? Others have suffered tribulation. Others have suffered persecution. Others have been persecuted for their belief in Jesus Christ. But the tribulation, the wrath of God is not for his people. Folks, listen, the tribulation is about Israel. It's not about the church. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Jacob there is a reference to Israel. Remember Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The tribes of Israel were the tribes of Jacob. So this is a time of Israel's trouble. This is a time when God is going to deal with the Christ rejecting Israel 
He's going to allow the Antichrist to deceive them and persecute them before he comes back. Bible says, go to Revelation chapter 6. Let me show you something. Revelation chapter 6, look at verses 16 and 17. This is a time of God's wrath that is coming. The 70th week of, of Daniel, we get into chapter 9, we're going to talk about the 70 weeks prophecy. And that 70th week is that seven year period that's still yet to be fulfilled, the time of tribulation. But in Revelation 6, verse 16, when the plagues of God are being poured out upon a Christ-rejecting world, they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So there's a wrath coming. Look at verse uh, chapter 16 of Revelation, verse 1. Revelation 16, 1. John says, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vial of the wrath of God upon the earth. So there's a wrath coming that is reserved for a Christ-rejecting world. Now back in Romans chapter 5 verse 9, Paul said, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. That's Romans 5 9. We've been saved from the wrath of God. Uh, go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. We talked to the seven churches of Asia. He made a promise there in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. He said, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Again, I think there's a reference to this time. It's going to come upon the earth that we who know Christ shall be kept from that hour of tribulation. Now I know some think, well, we've got to go through half of it. That the rapture won't take place till halfway through the tribulation. How to believe that view would require that many of the Lord's prophecies to Israel, you've got to apply them to the church. And I just don't think it fits. If you interpret the Bible literally, you have to believe that the church has been taken out before the tribulation period because God is now dealing with Israel. And that 70th week. We'll look more at that next Sunday. Here's the second thing I want to share with you this morning. I want you to think about the abilities of Superman. Go back to our text in Daniel. And we see the abilities of Superman, of the Antichrist. He says he'll be popular. Revelation 16 says that he'll be given a crown. When he comes, the world's going to embrace this guy. They're going to believe in him. He's going to have the answers to a lot of problems. Somebody said the Antichrist will possess the leadership of George Washington the charm of Teddy Roosevelt, the eloquence of FDR, the charisma of JFK, the political savvy of LBJ, the popularity of Dwight Eisenhower, and the intellect of Thomas Jefferson. He's going to have all of this. He is going to be Satan's Superman. The world's never seen anybody like this guy is going to be. He's going to be very popular. The media will love him. Amen. Fake news is going to love this guy. They are going to just adore him. He'll be powerful. He'll secondly be prosperous. He'll control the wealth of the world. He'll bring prosperity 
to his followers. He may bring an end to world hunger for a time. People are going to be better off financially at first under the Antichrist. Now, we're, we're thinking worldwide. Now, don't, just, don't just limit this to America. Because I believe the Antichrist is going to come out of Europe. So worldwide, for a little while, people are going to enjoy some prosperity under his rule. You remember Adolf Hitler brought prosperity to Germany, didn't he? After World War I, Germany was really down and struggling. And Adolf Hitler brought prosperity to the people of Germany. I think Hitler is a type of the Antichrist. What he did, especially to the Jews. So there'll be a time of prosperity. Everything he does, though, is selfishly motivated. He's only concerned about getting power. That's all he's concerned about. Which describes a lot of politicians today, doesn't it? Does it matter if America suffers or not as long as they've got the power? Number three, he'll be a peacemaker. But this is going to be a false peace. He will be able to produce peace for a while. In uh, Daniel 9, 27, we're going to read about a peace treaty that he's going to make with the nation of Israel to guarantee their peace. The, the, the world's tired of war. Amen? The world is tired of terrorism. And they're looking for a peacemaker. And the world will eagerly embrace a man who can bring peace, especially to the Middle East. But folks, the world will not know true peace until Jesus comes. What the Antichrist will bring will be a false peace. It will not be real peace. Christ will usher in lasting peace in his kingdom. I love Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4 where it says, They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We're not going to need West Point then, are we? Where they learn war? <laughs> We'll need that. There's coming a time of true peace when Christ sets up his kingdom. We won't need weapons. We just need tools. And number four, he'll be powerful. He'll be powerful. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Revelation 13, 2 says, The dragon gave him his power. The dragon being Satan himself. He'll give the Antichrist his power, his seat, and great authority. And the Antichrist will eventually rule the entire world. I've looked at this several times in Revelation 13, verse 7 and 8. Folks, this is what's coming. This is what's coming. Revelation 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. They said, Brother West, you said we're going to be taken out. Well, these are different saints. These are tribulation saints. I believe a lot, of, a lot of people are going to get saved during the tribulation. There's going to be two witnesses, I think, that will win many people to Christ. So he's going to make war with the tribulation saints to overcome them. Power is given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Look at this. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He shall deceive the world and cause them to believe his lies. How's he going to do that? The Antichrist is going to be a miracle worker. Do you know that? He's going to be able to perform miracles and wonders. The false prophet also will be a miracle worker. So by his miracles, he's going to deceive many people. Now, I've told you before, don't think God is the only one who can do miracles. Satan can do miracles. And by his power, the Antichrist will be able to perform miracles. Now, that's something to think about because... In the day we're living in the religious world today, you've got all these folks looking for signs and wonders and miracles. 
The charismatic movement is full of that. They're looking for a miracle. They're being set up so that when this miracle worker comes, he's going to deceive a lot of these people. They're going to think that his miracles come from God. No, they're coming from Satan. So be careful about falling into this trap of looking for signs and wonders and miracles in this day and time. That's how the Antichrist will deceive many when he comes. Now, all of this is true of him, as the Bible points out. That brings us to our third thought here. That is the abominations of this Superman. Back in our text in Daniel, verses 24 and 25, it talks about, first of all, he will attack the people of God. He's going to break his covenant with Israel halfway through the seven-year period. And he's going to turn on them to persecute them. His intent is to exterminate all the Jews. He's going to to try to do what Hitler tried to do. I said Hitler was a type of the Antichrist. He tried to exterminate all the Jews he could. And the Antichrist will try to do the same thing. Now folks, we're living in a day and time when the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. You see it in anti-Semitism. You see it in how that fundamental Christianity is being attacked today. We that are fundamental Christians, we believe that the Bible is the very word of God. We are told that we're intolerant. We are told that we're narrow-minded. We are told that we are bigots because we don't line up with this world. Folks, don't be surprised if one day... Fundamental Christianity is outlawed in America. They found out they can shut churches down. Won't be a big thing to just shut down certain churches. We could be outlawed. Now, you might have thought a year ago that that wouldn't happen, but things changed, haven't they? And this past year, have not a lot of things changed? And we're starting to see things we thought would never happen in America. So, Brother West, I came to get uplifted today, and you sure are bringing me down. We're going to get uplifted one day. Y'all want to have rapture practice? As far as I can go. He's going to attack the people of God. He's going to attack the prince of God. Back in verse 25, he will stand against the prince of princes. So he's going to make every effort to stamp out the name of Jesus Christ. While he's doing this, Christ is going to raise an army of evangelists. He's going to go throughout the world preaching the gospel. I don't have time to look. You might jot these verses down in Chapter 11, Revelation chapter 11, you read about the two witnesses. Two witnesses who will, during the tribulation, preach the gospel and many will be saved. Then in chapter 14 of Revelation, verses 6 and 7, it talks about an angel who will come and preach the gospel. Let me read that. That, That's a fascinating verse to me. Revelation 14 and verse 6. John says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Cliff, we need to add him to the missionary list. Here's a missionary angel. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now the angels are not allowed to preach the gospel right now. That's left up to us. But for some reason in the tribulation, God is going to allow one of his angels to be an evangelist. And he will preach the gospel throughout the world. I believe many will be saved as a result of the two witnesses 
the proclaiming angel. Some think the 144,000 will be evangelists preaching the gospel. So he'll attack the prince of God, and then number three, he'll attack the place of God. Talking about Jerusalem and the temple. Now, there's no temple there now. There's got to be a temple. For the devil to create, to have this uh, abomination of desolation, there's got to be a temple for that to happen. That's when the Antichrist goes into the temple and declares himself to be God. Jesus referred to that as the abomination of desolation. So that tells us there's got to be a temple. So you say, well, Brother West, we're not even close to the Antichrist coming. There's, there's no, no temple, no, no plans to build a temple. Well, there are plans. I think they've even got the blueprints and everything ready. What I think is going to happen is when the Antichrist makes this treaty with Israel, he's going to allow them to rebuild their temple. There's going to be a tribulation temple. That will be destroyed at the coming of Christ. In that tribulation temple, the Antichrist will declare himself to be God. Might take three years to build it. They've got the plans, they've got the materials, they're all set to go. I don't know if it has to be built where the Dome of the Rock is, but it's going to be built. It's going to be destroyed. Christ is going to come and build a new temple, which will be the Millennial Temple. That Ezekiel describes. So it's coming a tribulation temple which will be destroyed. And then after that the millennial temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he will attack the place of God. He'll commit the abomination of desolation. Again you go back to what we talked about Wednesday night with Antiochus. He did that. Antiochus attacked Jerusalem with his Greek armies. He sacrificed a sow on the altar. He forced the Jewish priest to eat the flesh of that sow. And he took the broth and flung it all over the temple. That's what Antiochus did. He took the golden candlesticks. He took the table of showbread. He took the altar of incense and destroyed the sacred books of the law. He put up a large image of Zeus in the temple. And force the people to bow down to worship it. The Antichrist is going to come and do much worse. Everyone will have to bow down and worship the Antichrist. Let me close with this thought. The afflicting of the Superman. Lord Jesus Christ is going to come. And it says that he shall be broken without hand. The Antichrist will be destroyed. He'll be defeated. It will be sudden. At the end of the tribulation period, all these armies are going to be gathered together in the valley of Megiddo for the great battle of Armageddon. At that point in time, Christ will return with his armies and destroy the armies of the Antichrist. Let me remind you what's said in Revelation 19, verse 20. What's going to happen to this Antichrist? Revelation 19, 20 says the beast was taken, that's the Antichrist, with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast, them that worshipped his image. Both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So that's what's going to happen to the Antichrist. When the Lord Jesus comes, he's going to defeat him and his armies He's going to cast him into the lake of fire. Be sudden. And it will be serious. Cast into the lake of fire. I assume they'll be the first. People who die today without Christ go to hell. Hell's not the lake of fire, is it? Hell's different. Because the Bible says in Revelation 20 that hell will be cast into the lake of fire. So those who die without Christ go to this prison called hell but in the end they'll all be cast into the lake of fire nobody's in the lake of fire right now as far as I know the antichrist and false prophet will be the first ones cast into it then at the great white throne judgment 
all those that come out of hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And then Satan himself will be cast into the lake of fire. Look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They've been there a long time. And they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And it talks about the great white throne. And all those who died without Christ will also be cast into the lake of fire to spend eternity with that unholy trinity. With the dragon, the antichrist, and the false prophet. Now my friend, you don't want to go there. You want to avoid that place with all your heart. There's only one way to avoid it. That's by trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you'll trust in Him, He'll save you. He'll give you eternal life. And the wrath of God will never come upon you. Why? Because Jesus suffered the wrath of God on the cross. On the cross, the wrath of God was poured out upon the Lord Jesus. And He suffered that for us. So that we can avoid it. So in spite of all of his power and greatness, this man of sin will be defeated and will be destroyed. So folks, we're at that time. Now here's what I want you to think. There's two sides here. You've got the Lord Jesus Christ and you've got the Antichrist. You've got God you've got Satan. You're on one side or the other. He said, no, Brother West, I'm neutral. No, you're not. You're not neutral. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. If you're not with him, you're against him. If you die without Christ as your Savior, you will be cast into the lake of fire. I don't care how good you think you are. Because the Bible says there's none good. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Folks, you've got to make up your mind which side you want to be on. I've made my choice. I'm on the Jesus side. I'm putting all my faith and trust in Him. But if you don't, then you're on the wrong side. The Lord doesn't come soon. You die. You'll die without Christ. You'll die without hope. If the Lord should come today or in the next few weeks, if you're not saved, you're going to be left behind. See, so when I'll get saved then during the tribulation, you said people get saved during the tribulation. There will be. But those who rejected Jesus Christ may be those who receive that strong delusion. You had your chance. God may give you a strong... You know what the Antichrist is going to do? Are y'all in a hurry to go anywhere? Let me, let me say this before I close. Brother Sam, y'all come ahead and get ready for our invitation. But the Antichrist is coming. And many are going to be deceived by him. And there are those today that say, well, I'll just wait. And if you guys get raptured, then I'll believe. That, that's, that's a risky plan. <laughs> that's a very risky plan to take. But some of you have loved ones that have said that. They've told me that. If you guys disappear, then I'll believe. You don't believe when you decide to. You believe when God deals with you. God may not deal with you after we're gone. The Bible says there's a, no, you can cross the line and you can be given over to a reprobate heart where God ceases to deal with you any longer. Today's the day of salvation. If you're not saved, if you don't know for sure about your salvation, you need to deal with that today. 